The Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you, Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When her grandfather died, Norma Roswell came to the Yukon Territory to take over the fur company which the old man had owned and operated. The company was located in Dawson City. Norma knew absolutely nothing about the fur business, and she admitted as much to Hugo Groton, her grandfather's assistant, who had been managing the business since the old man's death. Frankly, Mr. Groton, I feel pretty helpless trying to take over a business that I know nothing about. I'll have to rely on you to run things while I'm learning my way around. You can rely on me completely, Miss Roswell. In fact, you needn't trouble yourself about the details at all. I doubt if an attractive young lady like you would find them very interesting anyway. Oh, uh, you were my grandfather's bookkeeper, weren't you? That's right. When his health began to fail last summer, I more or less took over the active management of the company. I really don't even know the simplest facts about the business. Where do we get the furs that we handle? From trappers? Yes, we buy from trappers. And also from traders who operate trading posts out in the wilderness. And we ship the furs to the states, is that it? That's right. There's an agent in San Francisco who markets the furs for us. I suppose the warehouse down by the river is where we store the furs for shipment. Exactly, exactly. We receive the furs here at the office and transfer them down to the warehouse at the end of each week. <laughs> I'm learning fast. Well, there's a great deal to the fur business such as learning how to judge the quality of furs and how to bargain with the trappers and traders. But, as I say, you can leave the details in my hands. I'll have to, until I learn more about the business. Oh, it's past two o'clock. Uh, if you'll excuse me, Miss Roswell, I'll drop over to the post office and see if any mail has come in for us from our agent in San Francisco. <laughs> Do you think it's safe to leave me here in charge? Oh, yes, of course. The clerk will be here to help you. And if anyone should bring in a load of furs, you can ask him to wait around till I get back. All right, Mr. Groton. I can manage. Instead of going to the post office, Hugo Groton went to a cabin on the outskirts of town. Inside the cabin, a group of hard-looking men were playing cards. The leader was a big black-bearded man named Turk Malone. They looked up from their game as Groton entered. Howdy, Turk. Hello, boys. Hello, Mr. Groton. Pull up a chair. Thanks. Well, what's the dope? Are we still going to be able to keep on with our deal now that the dame has taken over the company? Sure, sure. Don't worry about her. <laughs> well, she's a babe in the woods. Doesn't know a thing about the fur business, so she'll have to leave everything in my hands. Uh, and then you'll still be able to handle all the stolen furs we bring you. Certainly. Eh? The same arrangement as always. I pay you gents a generous price for all the furs you bring in, and I enter that price on the company books. Then afterwards, you kick back half of the money to me. You sure don't cheat yourself, honey, do you? We take all the risk, you rake in half the profits. What are you complaining about? I'm providing you with an easy way to get rid of all the furs you steal. In fact, the whole scheme was my idea. All right, all right, forget it. Now, about those furs that flat nose brought in this morning... I paid him 6000 for the lot of them, which means I have 3000 coming back to me. Hand him over the three grand flat nose. Okay, Turk. Got it right here in my pocket. There you go, Groton. Uh, 1000 $2,000, 3000 Thank you, thank you. Well, I'd better be getting back to the office. In the meantime, keep up the good work. Meanwhile, at the fur company office, Norma Roswell was receiving two visitors. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. This is a friend of mine, Hal Bradford. How do you do? I sure am pleased to meet you, miss. Won't you sit down? Thank you. 
What a beautiful dog you have, Sergeant. What's his name? King. He's the greatest dog in the North Country. I hope you don't mind my bringing him into your office. Oh, not at all, Sergeant. I'm very fond of dogs. <laughs> Hello, fella. You're new to the territory, aren't you, Miss Roswell? Oh, very much so. I just arrived in Dawson yesterday. You see, my grandfather died several months ago and left the company to me. So I came to the Yukon to take over. You're going to operate the company yourself? I'm going to try. For the time being, though, I'll have to depend pretty heavily on Hugo Groton. He's been taking charge of things since my grandfather's death. Yes, I'm acquainted with him. Uh, what was it you wanted to see me about, Sergeant? In the last few months, there's been an outbreak of fur robberies all over the territory. Trappers have had their furs stolen, and two of them have been shot to death. Oh, how terrible. We're pretty sure the same gang's responsible for all of the crimes, but up until today, we haven't been able to get a lead on them or trace any of the stolen furs. And now you have a lead? It's not exactly a lead yet, but eventually it may help us catch the criminals. What exactly do you mean? Hal Bradford here is a trapper. He has a cabin out on the Squaw River. Several days ago, his furs were stolen while he was out tending his trap line. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Not half as sorry as I was. Luckily, Hal took the precaution of branding a small mark on each pelt. So now he'll be able to identify those furs if they ever turn up. Is that it? That's right. And I'll be able to prove they were stolen from me. But why are you telling me all this? The gang must have some way of disposing of all the furs they steal. They're probably selling them to various fur companies and trading posts. You mean they may have sold some to this company? Quite possible. Has your company received any furs in the last couple of days? Well, yes, we received some this morning. And I know there have been others. They're in the back room waiting to be transferred to the warehouse. Would you like to look them over? We sure would. All right, I'll show you where they are. They're right in here. What sort of furs were stolen from you? Well, among them, there were a couple of dozen silver foxes, a lot of beavers, some lynx, uh, and a couple of wolverine pelts. Why, I believe that's just what was in the bale of furs we received this morning. Oh? They're right over here in the corner. My golly, those look like my furs. See if your brand's on the pelts. Huh? It's there, all right. Take a look. A small X mark. That's right. I'll bet it's on every pelt in this bundle. Let's see. Sure, it's on this next one. This one? This one, too. By thunder, there's no doubt about it. These are the furs that were stolen from me. Who brought in this bale of furs, Miss Roswell? Why, I really don't know, Sergeant. I was here when it happened, but Mr. Groton handled the transaction. What did the man look like? Well, he was heavy set, and his nose was flat as though it had been broken. He was wearing a wool cap and a mackinaw. Did Groton know him by name? I'm not sure. You see, the man was already here when I arrived at the office this morning. Oh. Mr. Groton was examining the furs, and then a little while later, he paid him off, and the man left. Oh, that's probably Mr. Groton now. Maybe he can tell you more. We'll go out and talk to him. Oh, there you are, Miss Roswell. And Sergeant Preston, too. Was anything wrong? This bale of furs you bought this morning was stolen from what? Hal Bradford here. Stolen, you say? That's right. I identified him by a mark I branded on the pelt. I told Sergeant Preston what the man looked like who brought them in. Perhaps you can tell him who the man was. Why, why no, I don't know who he was. You had any dealings with him before? No, I, I never laid eyes on him before this morning. Oh. Miss Roswell says that he has a flat nose... And that he wore a mackinaw and wool cap. Can you add anything to that description? Uh, no, I don't believe I can. To tell you the truth, I, I didn't pay much attention to his appearance. Well, he shouldn't be too hard to identify. I'll notify the city patrol. Maybe we can pick him up before he leaves town. All right, Hal, we may as well be going. Come along, King. Bye, sir. Bye. Hal, how would you like to do me a favor? Why, sure, Sergeant. What's up? I'm wondering if Hugo Groton may not know more than he's telling. Groton? What do you mean? When he found out that you'd identified the stolen furs and that he had a description of the man who brought them in, I got the impression that he was a bit frightened. Well, yeah, not you mention that he did seem kind of nervous. I still don't see exactly what you're driving at. Groton's been in complete charge of the Roswell Fur Company ever since the death of Miss Roswell's grandfather. That means that he's been in position to dispose of all the furs the gang's stolen in the last few months. I get it. I think he's working in codes for the gang. Just a hunch, but it may be worth following up. Well, what is it you want me to do for you, Sergeant? I'd like you to wait here and keep a watch on the fur company office. 
If Groton leaves the office, follow him and let me know where he goes. Sure. I'll do it. Well, what's the idea? If Groton really is working with the gang, he'll be worried that we might find the man who stole your furs. So I'll probably try to warn him as soon as possible to stay undercover. Oh, I see. And if I follow him, I can find out where the gang's hide on it. That's right. Now, uh, keep out of sight as much as possible so Groton won't see you. And just follow him wherever he goes. Don't try to investigate any further. Notify me at headquarters and let me handle the situation. Right. Twenty minutes later, Hugo Groton emerged from the fur company office and went back to the cabin on the outskirts of town where he had met Turk Malone and the gang of fur thieves. He didn't know that Hal Bradford was following him. What are you doing back here, Groton? Where's Flatnose? Flatnose? Well, he went out a while ago to get some tobacco. Well, what's wrong? Plenty. Those furs he brought in this morning have been identified uh, by the trapper he stole them from. Identified? How come? It seems the trapper put a brand mark on each pelt. And that's not all. The Mounties have a description of Flatnose, and they're out looking for him right now. Holy mackerel. You've got to keep him out of sight until the search dies down. Yeah, you're right. Maybe that's Flatnose now. Oh, uh, get inside before I plug you. But Bradford. Hello, Groton, you dirty crook. You know this guy, Groton? I'll say I know him, Flatnose. He's the trapper whose furs you brought in this morning. Yeah, what's that? Where'd you find a flat nose? Well, I was coming back to cabin. and I spotted this guy trailing Groton. After Groton went inside, he hung around for a minute or so, sort of sizing up the place. Yeah. So I figured I'd better put a gun on him and find out what he was up to. It was a mighty good thing you did. He identified those furs you stole from him, and now the Mounties are out looking for you. Jumping catfish. If you hadn't caught him, he probably would have gone to the Mounties and led them here to the hideout. Well, he won't go shooting up his mouth now. We'll see to that. Now, wait a minute, Turk. Yeah? If you're thinking of killing Bradford, that may not settle things. What do you mean? For all we know, it was the Mounties who told Bradford to keep a watch on me. If so, they're going to get mighty suspicious when they find out he's disappeared. Yeah, I never thought of that. You ain't suggesting we ought to turn him loose, are you? Not by a long shot. What do you think we ought to do, Gordon? I have a scheme that will account for Bradford's disappearance and at the same time put me completely in the clear. It'll make the Mounties think I had nothing to do with the fur robberies. Let's hear your scheme. Now, here's what I've got in mind. Right after I go back to the office, Flat Nose can show up again with another bale of furs. Hey, I don't like that. Now, hold your horses a minute and listen. As soon as you show up, I'll pull a gun on you and pretend I'm going to holler for the police. Well, then what? Then you jump me and take the gun away from me. There'll be three of us there at the office, me and Norma Roswell and the clerk. You can tie us up or lock us in the back room and make your getaway. Well, that'll put you in the clear, all right. But how will that explain Bradford's disappearance? Very simple. The Mounties will think Bradford spotted Flatnose and went after him. Yeah. They'll wait for him to come back. And when he doesn't show up, they'll figure he ran into trouble. <laughs> yeah, I say. That's plenty smart. Later that afternoon, after Hugo Groton had returned to the fur company, the crook called Flatnose entered the office. The clerk stared at him in surprise. Well, what are you staring at me that way for? Why, why no particular reason. I, I'm just surprised to see you come back. You were here this morning, weren't you? Well, what if I was? Happens I got another bunch of furs to sell. Where's the factor? Mr. Groden's in his office, talking to Miss Roswell, the owner of the company. I'll, I'll go get him. You wait right here. All right, make it snappy. Certainly. I'll get him right away. Mr. Groden. Yes, what is it, Jed? That man who was here this morning, the one Sergeant Preston is looking for, he's here again. Well, What's that? You mean the man who sold us those stolen furs? That's right, Miss Roswell. The fellow with the flat nose. He just came in with another bunch of furs. All the confounded nerve. We'd better go get Sergeant Preston right away. Mr. Groton, do you suppose you can keep him talking until the sergeant gets here? We'd better not take any chances. I have a gun here in this drawer. Uh, here it is. What are you going to do? I'm going to cover him with this gun and make sure he doesn't get away. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mr. Groton, be careful. If he's a member of that gang, he may be a killer. Don't you worry, Miss Roswell. I can handle him. Get your hands up, mister. Hey... What are you pointing that gun at me for? I said get your hands up. All right, all right, but what's the idea? The game's up, mister. We found out those furs you sold us this morning were stolen from a trapper out on the Squaw River. You can't prove that. Oh, yes, we can. The trapper has already identified them by a mark he branded on each pelt. Now then, I'd better search you and make sure you're not carrying a gun. Oh, no, you don't. Look out! Uh, take this! Oh, uh, I'll take that gun. Uh, that's better. Now reach. All of you. Uh, what are you going to do? I could kill the whole bunch of you. 
But the shots will make too much noise. So I guess I better just lock you up in the back room. All right, get moving. A short time later, at Mounted Police Headquarters, Sergeant Preston was talking to Constable Alex Ross. Any report yet from the city patrol, Alex? Not yet, Sergeant. But they've all been notified to be on the lookout. Mm. Sergeant it, Preston. What's the clerk from the first company? What's wrong, Judge? Sergeant, that flat-nosed fella, he just showed up again at the office. Oh? Huh? Is he still there? No, he got away. Mr. Groden tried to hold him with a gun, but he knocked Groden down and got the gun away from him. He locked us all up in the back room. We just broke out a few minutes ago. Come on, Alex. We'd better get over there. When the two Mounties arrived at the Fur Company office, they learned the details of what had happened. Norma Roswell had been much impressed by Hugo Groton's apparent bravery. Even though that crook got away, I think it was very brave of Mr. Groton to do what he did. Don't you, Sergeant? Mm, yes. Are you sure you feel all right, Mr. Groton? Your jaw's swollen. Yes, yes, I'm quite all right, thank you. He hit me pretty hard, but I feel all right now. Strange he should have come back again the same day. Did you say what he wanted? He had another bunch of furs with him that he wanted to sell us. Probably stolen like the first bunch. Probably so. Any chance of King trailing him, Sergeant? Well, I'm afraid not, Alex. If he'd left something behind or if the office were empty, it'd be a different story. But as it is, there's no way for King to pick out his scent. Isn't there any hope of catching him? Oh, of course there is, Miss Roswell, and I'm sure we shall sooner or later. Oh, by the way, where are you living, in case I have to get in touch with you? At the Victoria Hotel. I guess you know where my cabin's located. Yes, I do. All right, Alex, we may as well go back to headquarters. Right, Nothing sir. more we can do here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I guess this puts Groton in the clear, eh, Sergeant? Looks that way, Alex. Apparently my suspicions were wrong. Yeah, where's Hal Bradford? Why, uh, I posted him right here in the shadow of this building. He's not there now. Where do you suppose he's gone? He must have seen the flat-nosed man. Decided to trail him to the gang's hideout. Oh, yeah, that must be it. I'll just have to sit tight and wait till he gets back. By golly, if he does find their hideout, we ought to have the gang behind bars by nightfall. Let's hope so, Alex. Let's hope so. Nightfall came, and there was still no word from Hal Bradford. By 7 o'clock, the sergeant began to be seriously worried, in spite of Constable Ross's efforts to reassure him. Look, sergeant, there's no call to be worried. The crook headed out to the creek somewhere. It may be a couple of hours yet before Bradford gets back to town. Maybe so, Alex, but I still can't help worrying. If anything's happened to Hal, I'll feel responsible. I'm sure he's all right. Say, wait a minute. What's the matter? I'm wondering if we were right to eliminate Groton as a suspect. Well, sure, why not? If he were mixed up with a gang, he would have warned the flat-nosed man not to show up again. And when he did show up, Groton certainly wouldn't have tried to capture him. There'd be too much danger of the crook squealing on him. True enough, but suppose that whole incident were staged just to make it look as though Groton were innocent. You mean the flat-nosed man showed up again just so Groton could put on an act for our benefit? That's right. No, but look, if, if they cooked up the whole thing beforehand just to throw us off the scent, that means Groton must have gone to the hideout and told him about the furs being identified. That's just the point. For all we know, Groton did go to the hideout. We've been figuring that Hal followed the flat-nosed man. But he may have followed Groton and been captured by the gang. Holy smoke, I never thought of that. Alex, I'm not going to wait any longer. I'm going to talk to Miss Roswell and find out if Groton left the office any time after Hal and I were there. I'll go with you, Sergeant. All right, got your park on. Let's go. A short time later, the two Mounties arrived at the Victoria Hotel and knocked on the door of Norma Roswell's room. Oh, it's you, Sergeant. Won't you come in? Why, no thanks. We just stopped by to ask you a question. Do you know if Hugo Groton left the office between the time Hal Bradford and I were there and the time I came back with Constable Ross? Why, why, yes, he did. Oh? He went out just a little while after you and Mr. Bradford left with the stolen furs. Why? You say where he was going? Yes, he said he was going to the Yukon Territorial Bank to discuss our account with the manager. Thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Why do you ask, Sergeant? Is anything wrong? Well, I hope not, Miss Roswell. I'm just checking up, that's all. Come on, Alex. Right, Sergeant. After leaving the hotel, the two Mounties went to the home of the bank manager, Henry McCloud. What was it you wanted to see me about, Sergeant? You're acquainted with Hugo Groton, aren't you? Hugo Groton? Why, of course. He's the manager of the Roswell Fur Company. Did Groton come to see you at the bank this afternoon? No. In fact, I haven't seen him for several weeks. Were you at the bank all afternoon? Aye. I come back immediately after lunch and didn't leave until five o'clock. Then there's no chance that Groton came to the bank and missed you. Of course not, Sergeant. I'm sure he never came in. Thanks for the information. Alex, 
I think we'd better go to Groton's cabin and have a little talk with him. Good, sir. Meanwhile, after locking up the office for the night and eating his evening meal at the cafe, Hugo Groton had gone to the gang's hideout. Howdy, boys. Well, it's about time you were showing up, Gordon. What's the matter? You weren't worried, were you? Well, we haven't been chewing our fingernails, if that's what you mean. But we want to find out how things stand. Yeah. Well, you can relax. Everything's under control. You mean they fell for that act you and me put on over at the fur company office? Hook, line, and sinker. I could tell from their faces they were plenty puzzled, but they're convinced I'm innocent. What about Bradford? They say anything about him? Not a word. Hmm. They're evidently assuming he followed Flatnose, just as I figured they would. In that case, we may as well get rid of Bradford right now. The sooner the better. By thunder, if you kill me, you won't get away with it. Sergeant Preston will catch up with you and you'll all swing for murder. Shut up, Bradford. You'd better not kill him here. The shot might be heard. Don't worry, I ain't that foolish. Me and the boys were figuring on heading down to the Pelly River country tonight. We'll take Bradford with us and get rid of him somewhere along the way. Good enough. Well, I may as well be getting back to my cabin. Yeah, no reason for us to squat here any longer either. All right, boys, get your gear together. Right. We're hitting the trail right now. When Sergeant Preston and Constable Ross arrived at Hugo Groton's cabin, they saw that the windows were dark. Looks like he's not home, Sergeant. He may have gone to the gang's hideout. Uh, wait a minute. Here he comes now. Were you looking for me, Sergeant? Yes, we were. According to Miss Roswell, you left the office this afternoon, shortly after Hal Bradford identified those stolen furs. Why, yes, that's right, I did. Do you mind telling me where you went? Of course not. I went to the Yukon Territorial Bank. I wanted to see the manager about the company account. You're lying, Groton. Lying? Now, see here, Sergeant, I don't Save like... your breath, Groton. I've already talked to the manager, and he says you never set foot in the bank this afternoon. I, uh... Why are you checking up on me this way? Hal Bradford was told to follow you whenever you left the office. He hasn't come back. What happened to him, Groton? I don't know anything about Hal Bradford. Oh, yes, you do. There's no doubt you're mixed up with that gang of fur thieves. I'm warning you, Groton. If you want to save your own skin, you'd better tell the truth. Don't threaten me, Preston. You have nothing on me. Where were you coming from just now? I... I was out for a stroll. That's all. Out for a stroll, huh? Maybe a spell in jail will refresh his memory, huh, Sergeant? There's no time for that, Alex. Hal may be in danger right now. What are you going to do? First, I'm going to search Groton. Now, wait a minute, Preston. You Keep can't... Keep quiet and stand still. Oh, carrying a gun, eh? I'll take charge of this for the time being. Now what, Sergeant? We'll have King follow Groton's back trail. He just came from the gang's hideout. King will lead us there. Here, boy. Get this man sent, King. All right, backtrack, King. Backtrack. King had been trained to understand such a command. With an eager bark, he pounded forward. Get moving, Groton. You're coming with us. King led the sergeant to the cabin on the outskirts of town, which the gang had just vacated. So you were just out for a stroll, eh, Groton? I'll strike a match, sergeant. There's a candle on the table there. Good, I'll light it. Place is empty. Yes. But from the looks of these cans and bottles, people have been living here very recently. King had caught a familiar scent. The scent of the man who had been with his master earlier that day. Suddenly, he gave an eager whine. What is it, boy? He's found something. <laughs> it's a mitten. Alex, this is one of Hal Bradford's mittens. Are you sure? I'm positive. He made them himself out of Wolverine fur. He was showing them to me this, this morning. The gang must have been holding him prisoner here. All right, Gordon. King's just proved that Hal did follow you here to this cabin. You're still going to play innocent? I have nothing to say. I've already told you I know nothing about Bradford. Very well. Suit yourself. But I warn you, if anything has happened to Hal, you'll hang for murder. What'll we do with Groton, Sergeant? Take him to headquarters and hold him on suspicion. And we're coming back to this cabin and put King on Bradford's scent. Meanwhile, Turk Malone and the other four members of the gang were traveling southward. Several hours after leaving the cabin, they came in sight of a small canyon. Hal Bradford was lying on Turk's sled, bound and gagged. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, yes, oh. What are we stopping for, Turk? That canyon over there is a good place to get rid of this guy. We'll take him down there, shoot him, and dump his body. It'll be spring before anyone finds him. If you ever do find him, that is. That's yeah, right. All right, let's go. Must you, Husky. Must you. A short time later, the gang halted their teams inside the canyon. Oh, you must. Oh, 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 oh. 
Bradford. This is where you get off. Heave him into that snowdrift, Turk. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, which one of us is going to plug him? That don't matter. <laughs> we can all take a few pot shots at him for target practice. I'll take the first shot. Here goes. As Turk raised his gun to fire, a shot suddenly rang out from the rim of the canyon. Oh. Turk oh. fell, his flat nose raised a cry of alarm. Mounties up there on the cliff. Surrender in the name of the clones. Surrender nothing. The crooks dropped to the ground behind their sleds and tried to shoot it out. But the Mounties had the advantage of a higher position. And after two more of the gang had been put out of action, the remaining two men quickly gave up the fight. We give up. Don't shoot no more. Up the run. Up your hands in the air. While Constable Ross remained on the cliff, keeping the men covered with his carbine, Sergeant Preston descended into the canyon and took charge of the situation. After he had collected the crooks' guns, Constable Ross followed him into the canyon and helped him handcuff the prisoners. Then the sergeant untied Hal Bradford. There you go, Hal. Thanks. You sure saved my life, Sergeant. Man alive, I thought I was a goner. Sorry I ever got you into this, Hal. How'd they manage to capture you? Oh, rotten luck, that's all. It just happened that Flat Nose came back to the hideout at the wrong time. He spotted me trailing Groton and put a gun on me. By the way, how did you manage to get here? King followed Groton's back trail to the gang's hideout. There he found your mitten. That put us on your trail. Good old king. <laughs> I was hoping you'd find that mitten. You dropped it on purpose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in case you did locate the hideout, I, I managed to pull it loose just before the gang hauled me out to the sled. I figured you'd recognize it because I was showing you my mittens this morning. It's a good thing you did. Well, where's Groton now? We took him to headquarters and held him on suspicion. In spite of the evidence, he refused to admit that he was mixed up with a gang or knew anything at all about your disappearance. By thunder, if Groton thinks he's going to leave us holding the bag, he's got another thing coming. He was the one who schemed up all these fur robberies in the first place. You're doggone right he was, and I'll testify to that in court. Don't worry, with your testimony and that of Hal Bradford, we'll have no trouble convicting him. Three of the gang wounded, two wearing handcuffs, and Groton in custody back at headquarters. (laughs) Looks like we'll have no more trouble with this particular gang of fur thieves, eh, Sergeant? Right, Alex. Once Groton and these men have been sentenced, this case will be closed. On a lonely trail near Selkirk. Dave, that Monty Sergeant Preston is in town. We can't take any chances with him so close. Oh, stop worrying. As long as I have my luck piece, no monies will ever catch up with us. But to make sure we'll take care of that guy, Sergeant Preston, before we head away from here. They came here just to trail our gang. Well, he'll be found with a bullet in him. So stop worrying. Remember, Logan's luck still holds. Get up there. Yeah, come on. Yes, Sergeant Preston and King have come to Selkirk to trail the Logan gang. And it might be that Dave Logan may find the chance to put a bullet into Preston when things come to a showdown. Be sure to listen to this next exciting adventure, Logan's Luck. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, supervised by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you once each week until September when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next broadcast.